Welcome back to our Rich Rice YouTube channel. Today's class, we are going to be learning how to make this beautiful, reversible Victorian corset blouse. It's a reversible blouse with satin on the outside and akara on the other side. You can wear it either way, and it's very simple to make. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so this is our basic body pattern and I have my bust here that here already and my bust that have been transferred to the shoulder. So this is what the original pattern looks like. It's just a regular bust here that that will normally take. I drafted my basic bodies and I took it out of one inch on both sides on the under bust and on the waistline and then I connected that to my hip line. And I have a bust that here also which I closed and transferred to my show that we have done this severally on the channel so by now i'm sure we understand how to do this so now we're going to start by measuring the difference that we have between our nipple point this is the nipple point here and our under bust so here i have around three and a half inches okay so i'm going to measure that whole round and make that into a circle so this circle is just going to serve as a guide for me in drafting my neckline so okay so now i've connected the circle the next thing is for me to draft my neckline so i want this to be a sweetheart neckline so you need to determine how high you want your neckline to be like i said this is the bust point so from the bust point you can just leave it as three and a half inches or you can just go a little higher than what you have here from your bust distance that's the difference between your under bust and your bust point okay so I'm just going to go by half an inch upwards on both that leg just half an inch on both that leg and then I'm going to measure to see that I have exactly the same thing on the two that leg also so from here now I have a three and a quarter and I'm going to shift that there and then I'm going to make sure that I have the same thing on that side also so for the center front I'm going to you can measure it from your upper from your shoulder point here and measure the depth that you want so for me i think around nine inches is okay for me and then i'm going to take my curve driller and connect that so here from here now i'm going to connect from my neckline to my first that leg so i just want to get a really smooth curve from there and then on the other that leg now i'm going to connect that also to my handhold area okay so this is what i have so far so the next thing now is to start creating my dart line remember that i said i want this dart leg to be slanted okay so this is actually the requested part of this tutorial so i want this this dart line to be slanted i don't want it straight you can also leave it straight if that is what you want i have a tutorial on that already so the main thing here is that we want our dart leg to be slanted so now you're going to you need to determine how many dart lines you want we already have one so i want it to be a six panel corset so i have one here already i'm going to be creating two more it's 12 panels sorry for both front and back so i have one here i'm going to be creating one more which is going to divide this into one two three for me so which means i'll have three for half scale of the front three for half scale of the back and then i'm going to multiply this by two for front and multiply that for two for back also that's going to leave me with 12 that's three three for front three three for back so now to get that that line i'm going to divide what i have from this dark leg to my side into two and that is going to serve as my second dark leg okay so this is what i have now i'm using my ruler again i'm going to connect that upwards like this okay again i'm going to stop it on the waistline because i want to shape the dart leg so now to shape the dart leg i'm going to measure what i remember if i'm going to be taking it straight the 
bust pan that we used to get this center line which is a nipple to nipple was eight inches right by two that gave me four inches so if you want it straight you just measure this four inches down but because i want it slanted instead of four inches i'm going to measure two and a half or even two inches depending on how bent you want it to be so i'm just going to leave it at around two and a half inches and then i'm going to mark that so now this is my that leg i'm going to connect it like this so you can see that it's no longer straight it's now bent then the i'll go up by around two inches and then i'll connect each of those that legs to this like this so you can see what we have here is no longer straight likewise here i'm going to measure remember from here to here now we have around eight inches but instead of measuring eight inches i'm just going to measure around six inches i'll deduct two from that and then i'm going to connect this again you can go more than this if you really want it slanted okay so to take the dart here now i'm going to take a dart off because i don't want to take too much from this i want to cinch i want to reduce this waistline by just three inches so here i'm going to take a dart of quarter of an inch on both sides i don't want to reduce too much so quarter of an inch on both sides is going to leave me with half an inch in total so i'm going to connect this again to the two inches before the hip line just like this okay and then i'm going to connect it to my upper part okay again on the center front also i'm going to take a dart of quarter of an inch or half an inch depending on this is very important because it's going to make that center point go inwards there is a fitting that it gives the corset and you're going to like it so i'm going to take a dart of like quarter of an inch or half an inch here also so i've taken half an inch on this side that's quarter plus quarter that's giving me half an inch and i'm going to repeat that on the other side remember this is a half scale so which means i've already taken one inch already and the total that i want to take here is around three inches for both the front and back that's the reduction i want to do so if i take half an inch here it means i've taken half for one side of the front and half for the other side of the front that's one inch together with this is going to bring it, it to a total of two inches for the front so i have one inch to take from the back i hope you understand this i'm going to explain by the time i finish taking the dart so if i take half an inch here now i'm going to connect this to the center line like this and also to the hem I'm connecting this to my hem also so now this reduction that i've done i've done a reduction of half an inch here and here i did the reduction of quarter of an inch quarter of an inch so which means together it is half an inch also so if i had half an inch plus half an inch that's a total of one inch for a half scale front bodies so now if you consider the other half of this front bodies that's one plus one which means we have reduced this waist already by two inches and i want to reduce by three inches so i have just one inch to reduce from the back so now i'm going to shade out all of these that so that we will see the lines that we are cutting out okay so these are all the darts that we are taking up so now to tighten this upper part for that tightening i'm going to be taking a dart of quarter of an inch on both sides on the upper part so here from each of the dart leg i'm taking quarter of an inch inwards and then i'm going to connect that to my bust point like this and also like this so here also this is going to go up so i'm going to shade out that part as well so lastly the last thing i need to do now is to shape the side of my blouse so to do this from the waistline i'm going to go downwards by four inches or four and a half inches and then i'm going to connect that to the center front using depending on how you want it to be you can just connect it in a with a straight ruler so that you can have something sharp like that or you use your curved ruler to connect it whichever one is fine for you is what you're going to use so once you have that now this is what the front body is looking like and then we're going to cut this out and move straight to the back body remember we do not have any allowance on this pattern we're going to be adding the allowance when we are transferring to our fabric 
before i cut it out i'm going to label this part my center front this my middle front and this my side front remember i said that this is going to be a, a 12 panel corset so this is one two three for one half of the front the other half is going to be three as well that's six inches for the front and we're going to do the same thing for the back also so that's six for the front and six for the back making the 12 panel corset that we are working on so I've taken out the dart at the center front. Now I'm going to take out the dart for the side also. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the two other darts. So after this now, we're going to move straight to the back. Okay, so all the darts are taken out now. This is the dart for the center front. This is the dart for the center front, the middle front, and this is the dart for the side now. So I'm going to set the front pieces aside, and then I'm going to come in with my back panel. So this is the back panel with the zipper allowance, and I'm here to put my dart, but I have inserted my dart allowance of one inch. That's my regular dart allowance of one inch. It's already on this pattern, but I decided not to put the dart here because I want to divide this for my six panel. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to measure what I have here. I have nine inches here. I'm going to divide that into three, and then I'm going to mark three, three inches interval each. So that is for my panels. So again, I'm going to do the same thing here, but it depends on what you want actually. Like I was saying, you can leave the dart leg straight also, and you can also shift it just like we did for the front body. So if you are shifting it, it means I'm not going to be drafting this yet because I'm working with a marker. Ideally, you should work with pencil so that you can just clean it up and redraw whatever shape that you want to redraw. So now... I'm going to start by creating my neckline for the back. So for the back neckline, from my starting point here, I'm going to go downwards. I want it a little bit lower than the front. So I'm going to go downwards here by 10 inches. And then using my curve driller, I'm going to connect that to my ham hole. Okay. I'm going to connect that to my ham hole. So that's my back neckline. So... To divide my panels again i'm going to mark that on my back neckline and i have you can use this straight part i'll have three inches here six inches here that's three inches interval and then i'm going to connect this okay so this is what i have so we want the dark leg to be slanted remember we're supposed to have three inches here so instead of having three inches you're just going to tilt it a bit and then we're going to have two inches there and then i'm going to connect that like this and then for the other one i'm supposed to have six inches so instead of six inches i'm just going to tilt it a bit also and have five inches or four and half inches and then i'm going to connect that also so you can see that it is bent so now to share the dart remember i said i already have my regular one inch dart on this pattern i just decided not to mark it yet so here i'm going to share that one inch for the first one which is half an inch on both sides and then i'm going to connect that to the upper part and the lower part as well so two inches before my hip line and then i'm connecting that so that's the first that so remember we said you are going to be reducing this waist by three inches we already took out two inches for the front so now for the back i have just one inch left so to do that now i'm going to take a dart of quarter of an inch on both sides so quarter of an inch plus quarter of an inch is going to give me half an inch for one side of the back so half an inch for one side of the back and half an inch for one side of the front that's going to leave me with one inch i hope you understand that so now we have taken out three inches from this waistline of this pattern so it is as simple as that i don't want this tutorial to be too long because we already have a detailed tutorial on Victorian corset on the channel. So, these are the darts that we are taking out 
the next thing now is for me to shape this side also just like i did for the front so here i'm going downwards by four and a half inches and then using my cork driller i'm going to connect this to my side okay so now if you're going to be working with a zipper you're going to leave your zipper allowance here but for me i'm not going to be working with a zipper so i want to create a loop for this or use my eyelid so to do this now you can just shape it you can leave it as it is then you're just taking a dart here or you just leave or just shape it just like i'm doing so here on my waistline i'm going to take out one inch here and then here i'm going to take out half an inch on both the front on both the higher part and the lower part okay so this is what i'm taking or you can just shape it in a way that it's going to give you like a v effect so doing this now you can take out one inch here one and a half inches here and then on the lower part i'm going to take out one inch so taking that out if i connect it this is what it's going to look like okay so you can see the shape that this is giving me so the, whichever one you wish to work with is fine but i think i'm going to be maintaining this v shape that i have here so which means i'm going to discard all of this if i'm maintaining this so if i have this now this is going to be my center back this is going to be my middle back and this is going to be my side back so you have to be very careful you can see how tiny this is you have to label it properly so that you will not get confused so i'm putting an arrow to indicate this is the upper part and then you can also put an arrow on this side just to show you that this is where you join your center back to your side back and then for this, to your middle back and then for the side back i'm going to put an arrow to show just anything to make you remember each of them so now after having this center back now i'm going to take out my scissors and then cut out this pattern so again this back pattern also does not have any allowance on it which means when i'm transferring this to my fabric i'm going to be adding my seam allowance so when transferring to my fabric i'm going to have a seam allowance of 0.75 inch that's three quarter of an inch because i want that seam allowance to also serve as my bony channel so i'll cut this now i take it to my fabric and then have my allowances and then i'll bring it back to show us what it looks like okay so these are all the patterns that we're working with this is the center front the middle front the side front the center back the middle back and the center the side back the middle back and the center back so that's all together a six panel pattern for half scale of the bodies and then we'll have another half scale to complete the 12 panel that we're working with okay so i've gone ahead to cut this on my fabric and like i said i had an allowance you can see the allowance is a bit much i had it three quarter of an inch on both sides because i want to also use this as my boning channel so this is the center front middle front side front side back middle back and center back i still have my patterns on this because i want to use that to pin them together so that i don't mix them up so now if you notice on my side front now i will i also have an allowance of 0.75 i didn't have too much allowance because i want to fix the boning on the side also there is this fitting that the bone is going to give your side is going to help to compress everything together so that the shape can come out well so now to do this i'm just going to remove these pins now and i'll be picking this pattern one after the other so now i'm going to do this i'm going to take this center front two center front together first and then i'm going to place them right side facing right side and i'll pin it so i'll start with that so if you do this it's going to be very easy for you to join them and you're not going to make a mistake so i've cut out both my lining and my main fabric so i've held this together now so this is my center front now i'll move straight to my middle front and then i'll pick them one after the other so the first one now i'm going to pin it to this so you can see right side facing right side so i'll pin it to this and then i'm going to hold this with my pin 
so when you get to the sewing machine now it's going to be easy for you you just know that you just have to sew them you know the one that goes with the other one so now the second one also i'm going to pin it to the second side and i'm going to replace my pattern to pin the lining also so once i have it like this i'm going to pin it in place and then i'm going to move to the side front so this is what i have so far so now for the side front now the first one this is the first one that's the one that corresponds with the right side i'm going to pin it also to this like this right side facing right side and then i'm going to hold that with my pin as well then the other one also i hope we are getting this so the other one i'm going to also take it to this other side and then i'm going to pin it doing this is going to make the work a whole lot easier for you when you get to your sewing machine so i'm going to pin this also and then i'm going to return the pattern back for the lining so now the front is settled so now the remember the side front is going to be attached to the side back so now i remove the pin on the side back also and then i'll pin it so i'll take my side back the one that corresponds with the right side now i'm going to pin it to the side back so that they can be together and then the other one i'm going to pick it up again and i'll pin it on the other side okay so this other one i'm going to take it and pin it on the other side so that is how i'm going to pin everything in place before i go over to my sewing machine to sew i'll do exactly the same thing for the lining also so now the next one is your middle front i'm going to return this back and then i'm going to put my middle front also i'm going to pin it to the corresponding sides and then i'll do the same thing for the other side as well so it's that simple so this also goes to the other side and then i'm going to pin it to it okay, so i've pinned the lining also and i've gone ahead to sew them together by the 0.75 you can see how big the allowance is so ideally if you're making this you're supposed to open you're supposed to iron an interface to interfacing to your lining and your main fabric to strengthen it but because this is a tutorial that's why i just sew it directly like this so when you are making yours after cutting out your pattern on your fabric you iron you cut out interfacing for your pattern for your fabric also and you iron it to them before you sew it together like this so after sewing it together the last thing you need to do now is to start opening up these stitches and then you iron it down okay you iron it down very flat you open your stitches and then you iron it down so because i want to use this as my boning casing so i use 0.75 because the boning that i'm working with is actually a an half inch half inch size so let me just use this red line to explain so i'm going to use a plastic boning for this i'll open it up iron it flat then after ironing it flat on this edge here i'm going to sew it down so by the time i sew it down it will form a casing for my boning then i'm going to insert the boning through this casing like this so you make sure that the allowance that you are leaving you can see my boning on my allowance your allowance is a bit more than your boning remember we are still going to sew this down so that your boning can pass through the casing easily and if you, that is if you are using a plastic boning that's the boning that you can also on but if you are using a regular boning all you just need to do after pressing this down you can use your hemming glue to hold it between this allowance and your main fabric so that it can lay flat for you use it to press it down then you are going to lay your original line boning on it and then you sew on both sides so you make sure that the edge is going to be at the center point remember we are going to be having boning on both sides of the same allowance so you have one here you have one here so you place your regline boning like this and then you sew on it and then you place the other one just right beside it and then you sew on it also so now i'm going to create boning channels for three of these because this is a tutorial i'm not going to be adding a full boning to it i'm just going to hang on it down create boning channels and then bring it back to show so this is the other side i'm using this entire fabric as the main fabric and this other one as the lining so this is a satin fabric so i'm going to so i'm going to use this ankara to turn this 
lining in a way that is going to be responsible which means you can wear it either ways i'm going to turn it neatly so that you can wear it either way so the same thing that i'm going to do for this fabric i'm going to do on the ankara also i'll open the stitches sew in sew it down and then i'm going to insert my bone into it so i don't want this to be too long i'll go ahead and do this now and bring it back to show us okay so i've gone ahead to just sew the set just to show us so now i've sold that the same allowance as you can see and then my bone is just going to go through it like that so on the upper part here i measure like half an inch and then i'm going to so this is going to be like a stopper so that when i'm sticking my bone in it's not going to go beyond this place remember we are still going to turn it and we cannot sew on a plastic bone so now i'll do all this for this this is what it looks like on the right side i'll press this same allowance down now and then i'm going to just sew on both sides because i'm passing bone on the two sides so i'll do this for the main fabric and do it for the lining also so because it's just the tutorial i'll just do few and then we'll continue okay so i've done these channels and you can see what i have i just did the view so i'm just going to insert boning to one of it because i don't want to waste boning because this is a tutorial so when you are creating your channel make sure you use a matching color of thread i'm using this thread because i want us to see the boning lines properly so this is the main fabric as well so now to turn it i'm just going to place the lining against the main fabric and then you match the important places together so after matching them together like this you're going to sew it all the way around and then you just leave a little opening somewhere at the center back so i'll take it to the same machine now and run a stitch all the way on the upper part i'm going to completely run a stitch also on the center back here and then I'm going to do the same thing on the M. So on the other center back, I'm just going to leave a small space where I can turn this out neatly. So I'll go back to the machine and do that now. Okay, so I've sewn it round now. The next thing, I, and I have this small space to turn it out. So I'm just going to notch it round and then I'm going to dip my hand and bring out everything. Okay, so I've turned it out now. So the next thing now is for me to close up this hedge so you can just fold in your seam allowance and then you place a hemming glue there and you iron it if you don't want to sew it and you can also run a stitch there so when you're making your patterns make sure you cut out interfacing for it like i said especially for this center back because you're going to be making eyelets on it so you need to strengthen it in fact you can even add a boning on this side so that when you're pulling it it's not going to affect it so now i'll hang on this flat now and then i'll take it to the mannequin so that we'll see what it looks like so this is the inside and this is the outside so you can see that you can wear this both ways it is neat both in and out and if you don't know how to create eyelets on your on your lacing bar i have a tutorial on how to do that three different methods you can use in creating eyelets easily so i'm going to link that tutorial in the description box so you can check it out if you don't know how to do that so i'll take this now to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like okay so this is what the process looks like on the mannequin so i'm here to iron this so you need to iron it really flat so that it can lay well for you and then you fix bone into all of this channel remember this is just the tutorial so i did not fix a bone into mine but you can see how beautiful this corset is looking so you can pad it with a bra cup or you just iron a soft word into the cup area if you want to pad it and it will come out really beautiful so this is a reversible corset i'm just going to turn it so that we can see what the other side also looks like okay so this is what it looks like on the other side it's equally neat and beautiful i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye